Yeah, I, I had a couple actually. Um, one, I wanted to see if uh, I could. Uh, this is probably for Mr. Bob and Mr. Levy in particular, but uh, solve the presidential race a little bit. But the uh, California Supreme Court is expected to make a decision today on the gay marriage issue. Wanted to see if either of you had a view on that in terms of judicial activism. Well, yeah. Tom, Tom actually attended the argument, so why don't we have him? Uh, <laughs> it was uh, quite a sight. I didn't, yeah. I, I, I didn't see I did a majority not. for uh, upholding traditional marriage on the court there in the Supreme Court now. Uh, that there are, there are other steps that will be taken, presumably, uh, if the court rules against it to uh, uh, push for a constitutional amendment, which I think is on the ballot. I don't know for sure, but I believe it's on the ballot in November. Uh, but, uh, you know, it shows you the importance of appointing judges who have a, a narrow view of their role or a humble view of their role, to quote Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts. What do you think, Kurt? Uh, I think it's a classic example of judicial activism. If they did it, I think they've already issued their ruling while we were sitting here, so uh, it'd be interesting to hear what it was. Look, you know, there's many decisions that conservatives don't like, which I would not classify as judicial activism. One of the decisions that conservatives hate most is Kelo, the property rights decision. I don't like it, I think it was wrong, but I wouldn't call it judicial activism in the sense that you're really completely ignoring, in that case, the, the words of, of the Fifth Amendment um, to impose you know, your own moral standards on, on, on the case. Um, but the gay marriage thing is. I mean, whether we're talking about the state constitutions on which it's been based, um, or the arguments people have made under federal law unsuccessfully, um, you know, it's just invented out of whole cloth, the right to gay marriage. So I think that's a classic example. And, you know, part of me says let, let the courts do it. It'll just make the judge's issue more powerful for us in the election. Yes, right there. Uh, yes, I'm old enough to uh, remember the 1960 election. And it, it seems to me when looking over this long period of time that – uh, when you look at journalism in general, and this is more of a philosophical question about what's happened in the last 45 years or so, uh, that journal journalism was about ferreting out facts, presenting facts, and advancing them, at least presenting that to the public so the public could make a decision. And what it seems to me we've seen over the last 45 years is a deterioration in that. If you look at uh, individual biases presented uh, through the written media as well as the TV media, that you, get, you don't get facts presented objectively. What you get is a personal opinion or a biased opinion. And that's reflected, in the, I think, in public confusion to a great extent. So my question really is, if you look, for example, at Kennedy, when Kennedy was described as being inexperienced by Nixon in the 1960 election, he didn't say, oh, that's not fair, or I'm offended by that. But today, people are offended if you say something about somebody's background. And I wanted to ask you, to what extent is this due to say the, the proliferation of TV channels where you, uh, where you get a lot of different points of view, and has this really been beneficial uh, with the TV channels and this kind of personal um, uh, attack or personal opinions? And you, know, you can't say this because I'm offended, and the Obama campaign, I think, reflects this uh, to a great extent. When you look at his, you comments. know, let me just add an example of that, which I think a lot of people are missing. But just basically, the media coverage of of the role of the superdelegates. Um, five months ago, the idea that superdelegates could do no more than ratify what the pledge delegates, um, you know, vote totals came to, was non-existent and the Obama campaign invented the idea and it's been picked up. And I think part of the reason everyone has gone along with it is because there's this notion that you can't deny um, a black candidate the nomination if he has the most pledged delegates. Um, and I think, you know, the Obama campaign has done without quite saying that, you know, planted the idea that, you know, it used to be that if you went to the convention, whether it's Reagan in 76, Kennedy in 1980, and they were far far further behind than in Hillary Clinton. That was politics, you know. You do whatever you can to get the nomination. Maybe it's a long shot. Turning that now into a moral issue, that Hillary Clinton doing that would be a moral, is a moral outrage, and would be even more of a moral outrage if she actually continues to the convention. I think that's a more subtle advantage, um, example of what you're talking about. I wanted to point it out because I think it's something that sort of people are missing. Kurt, are you advising the Hillary campaign? You know, I never thought that I would be sympathetic with Hillary Clinton. I certainly think Obama is a nicer human being than Hillary Clinton, but I actually do feel sorry for her because she's, on, for the first time in her life, on the wrong side of political correctness. Cliff, what do you have to say about the 
sort of changing role of the media in the last uh, well, I, I few just, decades? I, yeah, I mean, clearly the media have changed. There's been some good, some bad. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I don't complain about the fact there's more channels. I wish there were even more channels. I wish there were more options. I wish there were more choices and that people would take advantage of them. And there's opportunities to go to places like aim.org to read our newsletter, a watchdog group, and, and find out what the media are missing. Uh, to some extent, the news is shaped by the individual's uh, own background. For example, just to take an example that we've been talking about here, uh, I might look at it differently. Uh, the McCain speech on judges uh, that uh, Kurt uh, thought was pretty good. Uh, but uh, Tom mentioned the fact that uh, McCain, when he was in the Senate, actually voted for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, one of the most extreme leftists ever nominated, in my opinion, for the court, as Kurt mentioned, former counsel, for the ACLU, uh, and, uh, and McCain, I read his speech, I read the McCain speech, McCain actually mentioned that vote in his speech. This is, to me, is newsworthy. This is how I would approach it as a journalist. If my memory serves, McCain defended that vote for Ruth Bader Ginsburg saying, well, she was experienced or she qualified. qualified. 